Hey, Smart Homers, John Stone, the DIY Smart Home Guy, here yet again to talk about three-way switch wiring. In this video, we're going to look at how to use two smart switches for three-way switch wiring in Hovitat. Stay tuned. This video is part of a series on three-way smart switch wiring solutions. If you're not sure what that is, on my website, DIYSmartHomeGuy.com, you'll find an exhaustive how-to section for three-way switches. As always, working with electrical wiring is dangerous. If you're not comfortable with any of these instructions, please call a qualified electrician in your area. Where else would you call him if he wasn't in your area? Come on. I'm going to cover three configurations. Configuration one uses two smart on-off switches. Configuration two uses two smart dimmers. And configuration three uses a smart on-off switch to control the smart dimmer. Configuration 3 assumes that the dimmer is in the primary or load controlling position and the on off switch is only being used to turn the lights on and off, but there is a caveat to that. The switches are wired in identically in all three configurations, but there are some magic tricks that you'll need to know along the way. So let's get into it. The three-way light switch on my lab wall is wired using method 1 from my website. That is, the line comes into the first wall box and the load goes out of the second wall box. Always make sure you check your original wiring method before you dive into this. Since our original wiring method was method 1, we'll wire this in using solution F1. Notice that with this option, the Z-Wave Plus switch in wall box 2 only has a line and a neutral wire attached. The smart switch in box 1 is doing all the work. This solution puts the line and the red traveler wire in the line side of the smart switch. Let's get those wires into the switch. First, the black line in and the red traveler wire go to the line side of the switch. Make sure you tighten that lug very tight. What was the black traveler wire goes into the load side. Notice that I've marked the wire with yellow tape to distinguish it from the line in wire. And of course the white wire goes into the neutral lug. And we'll just tack that switch into the box for testing. The other end of the black traveler, again, which I have marked with yellow tape, gets put into the wire nut with the load wire that goes out of the light. The red wire goes into the line lug of the smart switch. And the white wire, of course, goes into the neutral lug. And again, tack this into the box for testing. Restore power and test the primary switch. It's also a good idea to make sure that the LED is working on the remote switch, even though it won't be controlling anything yet. Configuration 1 uses two on-off switches to control the three-way circuit. I'm going to cover two options, both of which are pretty simple. Option 1 assumes that you have at least one scene-capable switch, like Zoos, Inavelli, or Homeseer on-off switches. That is, to name a few. There will be some differences between switches and hubs, which I'll update over on my website. In this example, I'm going to use an Inavelli LZW30 Black Series as my primary, or load controlling switch, and an Inavelli LZW30-SN Red Series as my secondary, or remote switch. Since those switches are already installed in the hub, let's get into Hubitat. First, you'll need to disable local control on the switch. From the Inavelli device page, scroll to the bottom until you see the Disable Local Control setting. Switch that to Yes, and then save the preferences. Another way to do this is to tap the Configure button on the Inavelli switch eight times. When you're done, you should see the indicator flash red three times. If it flashes green three times, it means that load control is active. Now, I'm pretty sure it works this way. I, I might have that backwards. It gets a little squirrel if you set it from the device page in Hubitat and you set it from the front of the switch. Basically, just set it from one location and you're going to be fine. Test it to make sure you got it right. Back in Hubitat, you'll notice that when we double tap up on the switch, we get this indication that the taps have been activated on the hub site. This is an Inavelli only feature as far as I can tell. Oh, and it's always a good idea to make sure that you have the latest firmware and device drivers when you're trying any of these instructions. For on-off switching option one, you'll need the Hubitat Simple Lighting app. This is found by clicking the Add Built-in App button and then search Simple. Click on the Hubitat Simple Lighting app and it'll take you into the Rule Setup screen. There's no special setup that's required for the primary switch, which is my Black Series switch. So let's move on to the secondary switch, which is that Red Series switch. 
Setting this up is as painless as sniffing a thornless, non-GMO, gluten-free, no-peanut product greenhouse gas limiting rose, if there is such a thing. In your Smart Lighting app, you'll create two new lighting automations. First, I want to control the lab and of LZW30 black. And the what to do is turn on the switch. The trigger will be a button pressed event. And the button is the Lab Inavelli LZW30-SN Red. And we're going to use button 1, pushed, and be sure to turn off toggle on and off. The second automation will also control the Lab Inavelli LZW30 Black. And what we want to do is turn off the switch. The trigger will be button held event. Again, the button is the Lab Inavelli red switch. And we're going to use button one held, which is the single tap down. As you can see, on-off works very fast from the primary switch. There's no issues there. And it works from the secondary switch. It's just a little bit slower, but it's really not that bad. What do you do if you cannot disable that internal relay, you ask? Well, here's option two. And since we're going to be pretending that this switch does not support scenes and or disabling the internal relay, let me turn those off real quick. This option is going to use a mirror capability in Hubitat. To use mirroring, we'll need to install the mirror app. To mirror the switch, we'll select the Inavelli Red as the source device. You can ignore all these warnings. Then for the slave device, we'll select the Inavelli Black switch. Then click Done. And Done. Why not click Done three times? Because that would be Done, Done, Done. And so far, this option is pretty great. I can turn the primary switch on and off from the remote switch, but there is one drawback. It's super easy for the switches to get out of sync. One way to get around this is to train yourself to always tap the remote switch to whatever the light state is. By this I mean if the light is on, tap the remote switch on first, then tap it off. Now, I really do not like this option, but it will work. To get around this, I set up two-way mirroring. My thinking was that whichever switch I was pressing would inform the other switch of the state change. Here's how that went. On the Inavelli on-off switch inside Hubitat, it worked just fine. In fact, it worked great. But I have tested other switches with this and it didn't go so well. The switches kept trying to turn each other on and off. I'll leave notes about two-way mirroring and how that works on my website as I start testing more switch configurations. So if you try using two-way switch mirroring, you'll need to test it first and make sure that it performs the way you expect. What I'm really trying to say is, when it comes to two-way mirroring, your mileage may vary. In the end, when it comes to on-off switches, I'd try to use the Hubitat Simple Lighting app with the scene control rather than mirroring because it's usually going to be a safer bet. Okay, so now on to dimmers. This is basically going to be the same thing as that on-off switch, but there are going to be a couple of subtle differences. For this demo, I'm going to use two of those Inavelli Red Series dimmers for this configuration. The safest way to do this with dimmers is to use scene control almost exactly how we did this with on-off switches. By that, I mean using the button press events instead of mirroring. To do this, make sure the second switch is properly set for scene control. On the remote switch device settings page, turn local control to off. Then it's over to our Hubitat Simple Lighting app once again, where we will set up the rules for on and off. And that gives us on and off control, and the on command sets the primary dimmer to the previous brightness level. Next, I'm going to set up a double tap up command to set the primary dimmer to full bright from the secondary switch. To test this, we're going to set the primary switch level to dim, we were young, we were then turn the primary switch off, then single tap up on the secondary switch, 
the light turns on dim. Now double tap up on the secondary switch and the light comes on full bright. You get the idea from here. You can expand this thinking and use various multi-taps to set different levels of brightness. As for dimmer mirroring, it worked the same way as it did with the on-off switch. And it'll allow you to use the ramping feature from the second switch. It's also a good idea to make sure that all of the settings are the same between the two dimmers, like dimming speed, ramp rate, and minimum brightness to name a few. That's going to save you a lot of headaches. How did mirroring work? Well, it worked fine, but there's a few things that should be noted. It'll be slower than from the primary switch, that is when you do it from the secondary switch. This is because the secondary switch must complete the action on the remote switch before telling the primary switch what to do then the primary switch just needs to do it. The second thing that you need to note is that this still gets out of sync just like it did on that on off switch. If you're wondering what two-way mirroring looks like with the dimmers, check this out. Two-way mirroring actually worked great with the Innovelli dimmers in Hubitat and it fixed that pesky out of sync problem. Again, this will perform differently from switch to switch and from hub to hub. You're gonna to wanna to test this out and see how it goes, but the safest option is always gonna be sticking with scene control. And if you're wondering, hey, John, can I use a smart on-off switch to control the dimmer? Well, you're in luck. The answer is yes. And since I recommend using scene control, your best bet is to do it this way anyway. Just set up the on-off switch with the same multi-tap features that you would have used for that secondary dimmer switch, not that you would have used, that I used in this video. And really do that and you're all set. I hope that helped you out. Until next time, cheers.